Hello everybody. This is the first of a monthly video podcast sessions under the global hemong chat that Onco Daily has initiated and I Neeta Radhakrishnan thank the team behind Onco Daily for this uh, thoughtful venture. So this segment of Onco Daily um, highlights research that is addressing issues related to global disparities in care for children with cancers and blood disorders. And for today's session, I am extremely happy to invite Dr. Asya Agulnik, the corresponding author of the paper, Treatment-Related Mortality in Children with Cancer in Low-Income and Middle-Income Countries. It's a systematic review and meta-analysis which was published in Lancet Oncology recently. Hi, Asya, and welcome to our program. Thank you so much for the invitation, and I'm excited to be here. Asya does not need an introduction to global pedonc viewers. She is a faculty of the Department of Global Pediatric Medicine at the St. Joe Children's Research Hospital at Memphis. And she's also the director of the Global Critical Care Program, as well as the Euro Regional Program of the Global Alliance. So in your paper, Asya, you discuss treatment-related mortalities in children with cancers in low income, middle, low and middle income, as well as upper middle income countries. So as we have all been hearing since the beginning of the GICC, uh, GICC initiative that survival in children with many in many countries uh, in lower income countries as well as in LMICs is less than 20 percentage, whereas those in high income countries is more than 80 percentage. And a, a significant uh, reason for this is treatment related mortality, which is what you're addressing in this paper. So your paper clearly defines treatment related mortality, which is death in the absence of non progressive cancers that occur uh, um, in during treatment of cancer. And it addresses the reasons for, uh, as in the dis disparity that is seen, and that you're trying to uh, correlate it with the, um, the global the economic status of the country as well. So that brings me to my first question, which is why did you select TRM to understand global disparities? You could have looked at cancer incidence, you could have looked at outcome as well. So why did you select TRM first of all? Yeah, so I think that there are many reasons why, for those figures that you just described, why outcomes in high resource settings are so great, greater than 80% survival, but so much worse in resource limited settings with less than 20% survival. And there are many components for why that is, right? There are issues with diagnosis, with access to care, with appropriate therapeutics, treatment protocols, and then complications of treatment. Um, so my background as a pediatric intensivist, of course, my interest is complications of cancer treatment and how to support patient survival through treatment so that they uh, can ultimately um, see the benefit of that treatment and, and achieve cure. And there's been a lot of work globally focused on barriers to diagnosis, uh, therapeutic access, and quality of care. There has been less focus on understanding really the uh, issues regarding treatment related mortality and more specifically how to address them. And so that was our lens in trying to understand that element of disparity. Yeah. And toxicity is something which we generally don't want to address in most of our uh, papers, right? So um, the paper describes TRM and I think in low income countries around 14 percentage and LMICs around 10 percentage and then upper middle income countries around 5 percentage. And globally, the reasons for TRM are the same. It's either infection, it's either um, hemorrhage, or it's encephalopathy. And you describe in your paper that infection is the uh, is higher in hematological malignancies. Infection or sepsis-related deaths are higher in hematological malignancies, as you one would expect. However, you also report that there is heterogeneity among the papers that you have selected. So is it heterogeneity in reporting TRM? Or is it heterogeneous? It's, it is that people are not reporting negative reports, a negative outcome. What is it uh, that you have seen? Yeah, I think it's everything, <laughs> all of those. Um, it's important, as you noted, that although uh, infection was the most common cause of death among those that described the cause of treatment related mortality, most studies did not. So they would describe either using the term treatment related mortality or toxic death mm -hmm. or call it things like induction deaths or early deaths or deaths during due to treatment mm -hmm. rather than saying what was the actual underlying cause of death, which is of course a problem because if we're trying to develop interventions to address treatment related mortality, we need to understand not only how often it occurs and in what diagnoses, 
but also why it's happening, what are the underlying causes. And so in many ways, we see this paper as a call to action to report treatment-related mortality more consistently um, mm -hmm. so that we can use all of that evidence in order to develop interventions. The heterogeneity really comes from a combination of the different centers that are included in the study. So the study included 501 studies, different centers, different diagnostic types and diagnostic mixes. So of course they would have different outcomes, different level of resources in the places where they occur, and then differences in reporting of outcomes. And so as a result, there was a big heterogeneity um, among these studies. We think our estimates are certainly the best available, but likely underrepresent the true burden. Yeah, and I think even you report heterogeneity in the paper, quality of the paper as well, right? So the quality of how it is reported as well, yeah. So yeah. in your paper, um, the number of um, abstracts or number of um, full text papers from low income countries were very, very less. So why is it again? Is it because they um, there were less number of papers or whether um, it was it because of the English language barrier that was there? I think it's probably both. Um, there was some bias inherent in our search strategy. We did only include English language full text, and that's because we needed to be able to extract all those details around the cause of death, which would have been complicated in many languages. Um, we also only included papers that specifically listed treatment-related mortality. And mm -hmm. so there was a, a large number of papers that were excluded um, because they included mortality, but they didn't specify cause, whether it was due to cancer progression or other like treatment related. Um, and so the sense is that that probably the qual as we know, the quality of the reporting was lower in studies out of low income countries. And so it's possible that more studies from low income countries were excluded. That being said, there are also just fewer publications in general around childhood cancer outcomes from low-income countries. And that probably comes from many barriers to doing research and publishing in those settings. There's less research training, there are less resources to support data collection and data analysis, and less experience publishing, especially in international journals. Um, so that's really a, it's a problem because those are the settings that have the highest mortality. And if we wanna address that mortality, we really need more data from those settings. So hopefully this is a message to your viewership they are practicing yeah. in those settings. It's really important to publish your data, even if it's in a small journal, even if it's a brief report, having that data out there with thorough description of if, so, if survival is poor, why will really help us advance the field. Yeah, and I think it's, um, so for many of us, it is like, um, it's a way to, it's like a, um, a self-assessment as well. So how your center is doing as well. So in, in, in five years from now, how have the, how the TRM gone down? You know, that's a helpful uh, um, index to know. Okay. So um, in that uh, infection, uh, when you assess infection as the major cause of TRM, do we have any number? Do we have any um, number of deaths due to infection per year? So just to know the impact of infection on cancer uh, survival. Yeah, so we, 70% um, of the deaths that had a cause listed mm -hmm. were due to infection. Again, that's still a relatively small percentage of all of the treatment re related deaths reported in the study because many didn't list a specific cause. How to translate that to global burden? That's a, it's a good question. It's something we're working on now. Of course, these data are from a systematic review for, of studies that were conducted over a 30 year period. How many years, yeah. Um, so it's definitely something that we would want to model and it's something our team is thinking about doing. But undoubtedly, if we want to address the burden of treatment related mortality, we need to address infection. Hmm. And when we typically address infection, so at an institute level or when we talk um, in smaller communities, we look at so many aspects of improvement, you know, so starting from hand hygiene to nursing education, to doctors who are coming into the unit. So um, according to you, which ones to so two adapted protocols? I think the paper describes that also, which again, something which we can echo very well, that there's no point in giving very highly intensive protocols because you're, if your TRM, as in if a TRM is more in that arm, you're actually offsetting the advantage of that. So, so among all these, uh, what do you, among all these variables to improve outcome, with your experience in global health, what do you think are the major or the lowest hanging fruits in this? So two, three of these uh, 
um, variables which can be targeted to improve uh, outcome related to infection? Yeah, great question. So as you highlighted, you might hear, you know, in a treatment related mortality rate of five to 15%, depending on the setting might sound low to you, but it is a third of all deaths after starting treatment in this sample. So we cannot improve global outcomes for children with cancer without addressing treatment related mortality. Mm. So how do we do that? Um, I think there's several strategies. One, of course, is prevention. We can prevent many of the infectious complications that children with cancer experience, and all of the things you mentioned are important. Another is early identification. So that's a focus of my work, is systems that, hospital systems that can help with early identification of complications of children during therapy. And that, of course, can happen in the hospital setting, as well as working with families in the outpatient setting to seek care earlier in the course of a clinical change so that interventions can be made, antibiotics, fluids, other things to prevent those late complications. Um, and then really supportive care. So as an intensivist, of course, um, I think a lot about what are the resources available at a hospital level to provide support for a critically ill child. And unfortunately, in many of these settings, those resources are pretty limited. Um, and it's not a lot of technology that's needed to support patients who are experiencing treatment complications. Even basic things like oxygen, fluids, transfusions, as long as those are delivered, antibiotics, as long as those are delivered in a timely manner, they can really reverse the course of the deterioration. And unfortunately, those resources are not uniformly available in the places that care is being provided. I think your point about um, adapted protocols is a really good one. Um, there's been a lot of focus in the oncology world about access to therapeutics and um, using effective treatment protocols. And that only works if you have the supportive care to be able to support the toxicity that develops from those protocols. In settings that have very limited supportive care, giving a very toxic protocol would result in actually worse outcomes because those patients won't survive the toxicity. And so that's where adaptation to local resources is really important to balance the the um uh, this the protocol the effectiveness of the protocol as well as the toxicity it produces now we can do a lot to improve supportive care to be able to support effective protocols but that really requires a multidisciplinary approach and interventions that are developed that work in resource limited settings where the challenge is the biggest so, so there are many many aspects to look into but i think um from a center which has infections as a major complication, again, like in many other LMICs, I think early treatment is probably the best early treatment and recognition, like you rightly said, these are probably aspects which we need to keep working on. And uh, for the future, do you think there are, uh, do you think there is scope for more work to understand what were the variables for these patients? As in, uh, it, are you planning a prospective work to understand why TRMs happen? Like, is it uh, time to reach the hospital? Is it time to reach a start treatment? What is, uh, what is, what all are you going to focus on henceforth? And uh, are you thinking of any registry for TRMs? Yeah, so of course, understanding the epidemiology of treatment-related mortality and the rates as well as the basic causes is only the first step. In order to be able to intervene, we really need to understand more details about what happened in that patient's course that resulted in a mortality and identify areas that could be intervened upon. Ideas like what you mentioned, time time to seeking care, time to identification, time to interventions like antibiotics, as well as the types of care offered, the internal processes for care escalation and quality systems that can address that. So those are all potential targets for intervention, but we need more data around exactly where most of the challenges are. And that does require future study. Um, uh, first, any people working on this, um, really documenting cancer outcomes, if they're able to report more information around where treatment uh, complications occur, that would of course help um, to develop these programs uh, for the global community. But then our team is definitely working on developing um, systems to report treatment complications uh, through registries, as well as really identifying what are the common data elements that you want to know for a child who develops critical illness that would be actionable, that would then guide mm -hmm. quality improvement interventions in the future. So that's definitely future work for our team. Yeah, great. 
So thank you all for a wonderful discussion, Asya. And from Mongo Daily, we again thank you for joining us today. For all our viewers, uh, especially trainees and global health researchers, do download and read this work. It's one of the most comprehensive assessment of global disparities in TRM in cancer care. And although patterns of mortality are similar globally, like it's infection, hemorrhage, the same reasons, any, any part of the world, uh, there are disparities in reporting as well as wide disparities in the prevalence of TRM. And it's a call for action for all of us to report TRM more uniformly. Thanks again for joining us, Asya. Best wishes for your future work. We'll Thank be you again... so much. Thanks for the invitation. Thank we'll be again back next month with another discussion on the global paid hemong chat. Until then, bye everybody. Thanks. <laughs>